Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's play it forward. Real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 604 is with Academy Award winning screenwriter Brian Hilgelin. Hey, Arrow. Hey, good morning. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Excited to talk with you because I'm a huge Paramount Plus fan. And it's oh, it's just quality shows like this that really makes me stay connected to this new age of watching storytelling. It's, it's more than just a movie. Right. It's more than just a, you know, a, a binge watch. It's storytelling. Yeah, no, it's great. It's like you have a chance to kind of dig in and, and get to know the characters and and get involved, you know, get involved in an audience. Uh, you know, if you do your job right, audience should always feel involved and part of it, you know, almost, you know. Do you envision them while you're writing? Because in radio, we put pictures in front of us so that we know that we're talking with somebody, not to somebody, but with somebody. Yeah, I, I, I never write for a current actor unless they're involved from the start. Um, but I sometimes write for dead actors. So I, you know, I've written, uh, you know, sometimes I'm like, I, this has got to be Paul Newman and, 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 uh, <laughs> Burt Lancaster, you know, and, and I do that. Um, but I don't, I don't write for current people. One time I, I had a very much of a loner character and I, I just looked on the internet till I found someone's face. I don't even know who they were. And I printed that out and, 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 uh, that became the guy, um, and it, it just helped. I agree. It just to have a face to, to put it all to is, is very helpful. Well, I can't imagine where this story came from and how it landed inside your imagination because I've never seen anything like this. Oh, no. Cool. cool. Um, I actually, my, the, I'm from that town. I shot this movie in my hometown. Oh. The uh, Jenna Ortega, uh, when she talks about the high school she went to, that's my high school. <laughs> Her mom's house in the movie is about three blocks from my parents' house. And I went fishing when I, my dad was a commercial fisherman, my grandfather, and I went fishing for a year and a half when I got out of college. And I wrote this script very soon after that, like three years after that. So I wrote the script when I was 28. Um, and, and so it, and it didn't change it much. So it captured that time in my life very well. Don't you think that's one of the, the, the magic tricks of being a writer is that we can plant it on a page and come back to it later? Because my third book was written, it was finally published 32 years after I wrote it. It, it just wasn't time. Right. Well, that's funny because this was, this is 32 years. Wow. This, I, this was coming out 32 years after I, I, I directed it 32 years after I wrote it. Wow. Um, yeah. It's just sort of some things, their time is not, for whatever reason, it's their time isn't their time when when you when you do them, um, and that, that was the case here. Wow! And and we get to see a different side of Jenna Ortega, which which I I'm, I feel so blessed that you're bringing out her acting side in a way that we've not really seen her yet. Yeah, the thing is, is is uh, she's a great actress. Yes, she's a great actress. She's uh, I call her two takes Jenna yeah. because it was two takes. <laughs> And she nailed it. She just would nail it every time. And we had to put her in a car. She's got that driving sequence. And she says, I know I can go faster. And I'd say, okay. And I'd almost be joking. And I said, you can go six miles an hour faster on this next take. <laughs> you got to drive up on the sidewalk and drive up. And we do the take and the stunt coordinator comes running over to me. A very experienced car guy for 30 years and he goes you know what she just drove that car six miles an hour faster exactly six <laughs> miles an hour faster so anyone that you can say drive it six miles an hour faster and they can is, is kind of serious about their work she loved being part of that ensemble and 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 uh she really she she came to to do her job oh yeah i mean even even with with tommy lee jones because tommy lee you know he raises the bar on anything that he's a part of yeah yeah yeah, he's like a. It's like a. Some, it's like some guy from the Old Testament who's shown up on the movie set. You know? What's great about this is that the water scenes are so real. How far out into the water did you guys go? Well, sometimes we're only about six or seven miles offshore. Whoa. But for the bigger, the bigger water in the film, we're we're about uh, seventy miles offshore. Um. Which is uh, great, <laughs> but 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 challenging, you know. So we just had to kind of point and shoot and get what we could get, and 
uh, and hope that we had enough. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time, but we all, all the crew had been out fishing. They, I did a boot camp and they all went out on a commercial fishing boat and learned how to do it. So they weren't kind of, we weren't teaching them while we were shooting. They already had a very strong sense of how to do the work. Wow. Yeah, because we've seen so many fishing shows from the East Coast where, you know, with, with reality programming. But this right here brings the drama. It brings two brothers together. And of course, you know, you got to put a crime family somewhere in there. And now all of a sudden it's like, yeah. oh, my God, this this right here is edge of the seat. Yeah, yeah. It's a, in some ways it's a family drama disguised as a crime movie. But <laughs> what, what crime is great for in a film is that it puts everyone in a crucible. Uh, the characters and there's no time to mess around because someone's pointing a gun at you and it brings the truth out in the character very quick uh, when things go wrong like that. So you get all all this family drama going and you can accelerate it all and get to the end, get to the point of it all because the crime element, the crime element forces everybody to, to sort of be truthful about things in a way. Wow. But see, a lot of a lot of listeners as well as viewers don't understand that when it moves through the actual writer of the story, I mean, I can't sit still half the time when I'm writing because, you know, you're putting all that action and stuff in there and you can only hope that you're, the viewers are going to follow, you know, follow right along with you. Yeah. I mean, I think it's part of the one of the difficult things I find today is that the studios want everything so spelled out yep. um, as opposed to the audience figuring it out. Um, and the audience is really, I think, much smarter. I, I trust the audience quite a bit. I trust the audience more than I trust people that, that are, that are in, in my profession in a way. Um, uh, we didn't have that issue on this film, but, um, you'd be, not you personally, but you'd be, they'd be surprised at how quick the audience picks things up and how, even if they can't articulate it, how how much uh, understanding they have, having watched so many things. So, if you trust the audience and you believe they're going to pick up on some subtle stuff, you can you can get a lot more on screen character wise. Yeah, because we're no longer the Perry Mason style viewer anymore. We want to sit there and figure it out before we even get to the end of the story, and we love being wrong. I mean, I love it when you guys will do something yeah. in a twist, and it's like, oh my god, I never even saw that coming. Yeah, yeah, and you're wrong, and you understand that you haven't been tricked into it. Yeah. You've been you've been surprised, but you haven't been tricked. Because tricking someone is not fair, but but surprising them is. Are we going to see more movies like this? Because I mean, I, I just love the way that that, that first of all, I'm I'm probably going to use the wrong words. I love the texture of this, and and I because of where it's at, and and how the story is told, and it's like I want that texture to be not like anything else. Yeah, I mean, I think one of a responsibility of a movie is to take you someplace you can't go in your own life. Right. And that could be out of space. It could be medieval times, but it could also be uh, the deck of a fishing boat. And no one, no one in the audience is ever going to be a commercial fisherman unless you're a commercial fisherman. And the movie has a responsibility to take you there. And that's also who these people are. It's, it's very much intrinsic in, in their character. So taking you there is making you understand them uh, by a way. Then no one has to make a speech about what it's like to be a commercial fisherman because you're watching them do it. Yeah, because it, it definitely feels like that I'm stepping into your story and you've given me that in- invitation, so I'm not sitting there thinking that I snuck into something. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is it's brilliant. It's going to be water cooler conversation. And, and I swear that fishermen are going to sit there and say, well, I guarantee when they go out on a boat again on the East Coast or even the West Coast, they're going to they're going to think of this movie. Yeah, no, when you when next time you order scallops in a restaurant, you'll know uh, you'll know where they come from. <laughs> that is so true. Well, you've got to come back to this show any time in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. All right. Thank you. Be brilliant today. OK. I will. I will. I will. Thank you very much. Bye.